Man, don't you just love it when it all comes together? Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and today I've got another book review for you. But before we get into that book review, make sure you are liking and subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you can get regular updates for when I put out new content. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and occasionally if I have extra content, I'll just sprinkle in an extra video if I've got extra to put out to you. So that said, guys, today is going to be Ship of Destiny, the last book in the live ship traders. Now, of course, if we're talking the last book, there's going to be some mild spoilers, if not full-blown spoilers, for Mad Ship and Ship of Magic. So, if you haven't read those books already, go ahead, watch those videos, or go read the books, and then come back. I'm, I, I can wait. I can wait for you. Don't worry. This is on the internet. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> that said, guys... Like I said, there will be spoilers, so let's get right on into this book. I am super excited with the way that Ship of Destiny ended. So, in terms of which one did I like more? Did I like Farseer? Did I like Live Ship more? Well, unfortunately, I still liked Farseer more. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, Live Ship Traders is better. Well, Live Ship Traders is very, very good. But for me, it's just Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest... Uh, I know a lot of people don't like Assassin's Quest, but for me, I enjoyed Assassin's Quest thoroughly. And really, for me, I didn't. I liked Mad Ship. I thought it was very, very good. Uh, but it wasn't until Ship of Destiny that it really clicked with me. And also, you know, just these big old honking bricks. Uh, we, I've been reading one a month uh, as part of the read along on Megan's Reading Revelations read along that we started back in March. And, uh, yeah, so where we left off in Mad Ship, we've got Althea and Brashen on Paragon. They have set sail to go take back Vivacia from the King of the Pirates, Captain Kennet. And, you know, from Captain Kennet's perspective, we are still on Vivacia, but Vivacia is having some issues. And what we can kind of discuss that a little later. This is going to be mostly non-spoiler for Ship of Destiny, but... You know, if, if I miss something, I'll either edit it out or uh, I'll get yelled at. <laughs> uh, and then we've got back in Beantown, we've got Ronica, we've got um, Companion, Cirilla, I believe I have her name as her name. And then in the Rain Wilds, we've got Rain. No, Rain's in Beantown at the beginning of this book, right? Hmm. It's been a week. Anyway, uh, but on the Rain Wild, yeah, no, Rain is in the Rain Wilds when this book starts because reasons and then after the fall of the uh, elderling city or the collapse and the mudslide and everything um we have got basically uh Al not althea malta is with kiki and uh companion kiki and uh costco uh satrap costco Cosgo, C-O-S-G-O, Cosgo. I keep wanting to say Costco, like the big box store, and I know that's wrong. So it's Cosgo. Uh, basically traveling down the Rhine Wilds, where they then get picked up by a Chalcadian uh, galleon, uh, who then flees the Rhine Wilds, because their ship's going to disintegrate if they don't. And from there, we have to deal with Malta, kind of, um, basically, just she feels trapped. She has to then switch roles again, which, let's talk, let's talk about Malta. Let's take it. Quick aside. Quick aside. Malta, I wanted to absolutely hate her in Ship of Magic. And by Ship of Destiny, she's easily one of my favorites. Uh, alternatively, I felt for Windrow in Ship of Magic, and I could take him or leave him by the end of Ship of Destiny. Like, eh, I, I didn't really care about Windrow. And, uh, yeah. So, it, it's... It's kind of a weird flop there that I found really, really interesting. Like, don't get me wrong, Wintro goes through a lot, and he's still a really con strong character. But in terms of, like, character growth, like, Wintro went down, in my opinion, and Malta just shot through the roof. I absolutely loved Malta's character here and what she really goes through. Now, don't get me wrong, she's still kind of vain, but she learns to be, like... She learns to play the politics game. She learns to eat her own pride... And that's really, really cool because then she starts to kind of worm her way 
and deal with Costco to benefit herself and to really help herself get ahead of this situation that she has found herself in. And it's great because instead of just being stuck up and spoiled and angry in the first book and then kind of... We started to get a lot of growth in Mad Ship from Malta. And then finally when Malta reaches the Rain Wilds by the end of Mad Ship, she was fantastic. And then she just continues to get better and better within Ship of Destiny. Every time I get a Malta POV, I feel like she's growing. And so honestly, I, I can't believe how much Robin Hobb was able to make me like this character. Cosgo, Cosgo still sucks. He's still a bratty, bratty guy. Even though throughout this book, he does get some character growth. He does realize that, oh, um, I was tricked. Oh, I, I made bad decisions, but I can take some good out of this. He's still a coward. He's still really not a good guy. And uh, I still can't forgive him uh, for his views on women from Mad Ship. Uh, I'll never forgive him that. And then we've got, you know, just... Uh, I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, you know, I'm just going to say the, the dragon. Uh, Tintin Gallia, I want to say. Uh, we get Tintin Gallia and we get the serpents. We, ha we now know the origins, the full origins of the live ships and how they're all tied together. So we've got She Who Remembers um, basically runs into a, a, a pack of serpents, a swarm of serpents, who then runs into Vivacia, who is now Bolt. Uh, and basically, shit just goes down. We kind of learn about the migrant patterns. We learn about the origins of the serpents. We learn that they are basically just fledgling dragons or like dragon tadpoles. We learn how uh, dragons come into maturity and everything like that. We get to see uh, Rain really into in interact with this dragon and start to change, which... The changes that Rain goes through, Rain and Malta go through within this book are very interesting and I think are going to have huge impacts um, throughout the rest of the realm of the Elderlings. It is so good that I'm literally wanting to wreck my TBR uh, to just throw in Tawny Man, but I can't do that because <laughs> I, need, I need a couple months off of Robin Hobb. As much as I love Robin Hobb, I would like to take just a couple month breather before I dive back in to just these emotional, emotional character-driven stories. Okay guys, editing Andrew here. Um, so I actually recorded this video like three weeks ago and since then, the very, very convincing Megan from Megan's Arena Revelations has already convinced me to start Tony Man. So survey says this previous statement was in fact a lie. And uh, yeah, I'm actually starting Tony Man this month. So uh, yeah, back to the video. Um, so, Let's talk about Kennet a little bit here. Kennet, in my mind, was, has always been kind of cool. I, I never mind Kennet here. Mind it, mind. Minded, sorry. <laughs> I never minded Kennet. I know what I'm saying. Uh, I know English. I can speak words. Uh, but Kennet is, you know, he is consolidating his power. But we also start to see him, like, slip up a little bit. We start to see him make mistakes against better judgment. But we also get we get that backstory. We find out why, the, why Kenneth is the way he is. And adversely, we also find out why Paragon is the way he is. We get Paragon's story. We get... Everything gets filled in here. Uh, Kenneth is still a very, very bad man. And uh, shame on him for everything that he does in this book. Uh, Kenneth is just... Kenneth is very much the do unto others that has been done unto you uh, kind of guy. So he was like, well, I had to, do, I had to go through this, so I'm going to make you go through it too. That's kind of how, who Kenneth is in a nutshell, uh, is what I come to find out here. I do want to talk about page length a little bit. Because uh, Mad Ship was 900 pages, and Ship of Destiny is also 900 pages. This took me, I think, 11 days to read. And there are times I wanted to give up. I, I, was, in, it was, I was in this weird kind of state where I was enjoying myself, and I still wanted to stop. 
mainly because I a when when you're sitting there reading, it, this this is hard. I mean, it, it's it's just it's such a thick book. There is so much in here. Um, is all of it necessary? I don't think so. Um, but I, I, I couldn't point to any one thing that I would say, I want this removed. Um, and it would make the story infinitely better. Uh, Ro Robin Hobb is going to write her pacing. She's going to write the way she writes stories. She's going to give us those emotional gut punches. And you just got to be okay with that. So uh, make sure that you were okay for a very, very long book before you pick up this series because two of them equals 1800 pages and they are just thick thick books so does everything pay off in the end yes for a robin hobb story i do think we get a relatively happy ending here i wouldn't say it's the happiest of endings it's an ending and uh <laughs> yeah it is an ending but uh, from every book that i've read so far this is probably from Robin Hobb, which is six. Uh, this is the happiest that I have read so far. Uh, we don't have super long chapters here, so you can just kind of read a chapter at a time over the course of maybe a week or so, or over like a chapter a day, and still finish this uh, in about a month if you were to just casually read this. Overall, I, I think I, I gave this like a 4.7, 4.8, out of five, which rounds up to a five out of five on Goodreads. We all know that. And am I definitely excited to continue the Rebel in the Outerlings? The answer to that is, of course, going to be yes. Yes, I am. Um, I, I I couldn't possibly dream of not continuing the Rebel of the Outerlings so far. Robin Hobb has become one of my favorite uh, authors. And, well, writers, authors, same, same difference. <laughs> but... I have predictions of where things are going to go, mainly because we do get the resolution of so many storylines that have the potential to drive the story a lot further. That said, guys, I do highly recommend picking up the Live Ship Traders if you do love a little bit slower fantasy with very rich, very dense very intricate characters and character motivations and politics and everything of that nature because i mean in here we do get a lot of politics because we have to we have to resolve the bing town situation we have to resolve the ring wild situation we have to resolve and get everybody into place for the story to have this fantastical um very very un improbable <laughs> In, no, improbable. Improbable. I, I swear I can speak English, guys. I can. I. I anyway, <laughs> um, to get this improbable just coming together of all these plot threads, it feels very much like a fantasy book, and a story that can only be told within a fantasy setting. Well, of course, dragons and living ships. But that said, guys, go ahead, do yourself a favor, read Farce here. Then continue on to the live ship traders. I do not think you will be disappointed. Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. How did you like the live ship traders? Do you like Farseer more? Do you like live ship more? Do you recommend starting at live ship instead of Farseer? I always recommend Farseer because live ship has spoilers for Farseer and therefore kind of ruins a lot of the impact of it. Uh, just let me know in the comments down below. I would love to talk to you guys. Or if you just want to talk books, check the link down below for the link to the Wizardly Duo Discord. We would love to have you. Go on in. Come on in. And uh, just talk to us. So, till next time, guys. Peace out. Stay magical.